So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 Subject Test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 40. Which of the following could be the equation of one cycle of the graph in the figure above? It helps a lot to have a graphing calculator here and just be able to throw these in and see what it looks like. But we'll go through a method, you know, to, how to think about it if you prefer not to put it in the calculator or you want to just review graphing trig functions. We seem to have a sine curve, right? And it's maybe not as classic of a sine curve as you normally see. Normally we start at zero and have it go up, down, and back up. And the units on that would be zero, and then when you hit this high point, you're at pi over two on the x-axis. And then when you hit zero again, you're at pi. And then here, you're at three pi over two, and then two pi. So the the period is normally two pi for a classic sine curve and a classic cosine curve. Let's do the cosine curve too while we're at it because it's good review. Cosine curve starts at one and goes down and back up and it's and it finishes at one. And it's the same thing. It's zero here, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi, and that's the period. But what we notice here is that the x-axis is going from negative pi over four to pi over four, which is a total distance of pi over two. So the period has been compressed from 2 pi to pi over 2, which means the frequency has been quadrupled because if the period is 4 is one fourth of what it typically is, then the period the period is one fourth, the frequency is four times bigger. right? What's the relationship between frequency and period? Let's actually draw the uh, let's write out a general trig function. So we have y equals a sine b x minus c plus d, right? We have to remember what all these variables are. a is the amplitude, b is the frequency, c is the horizontal shift, and d is the vertical shift. None of these guys seem to have a vertical shift, so we'll neglect d. And the amplitudes are all 1, and it's not even marked on the y-axis, so the amplitude isn't really a factor. This problem is all about the interplay between the frequency b and the horizontal shift C. So normally, if you just had like a really simple graph, like y equals sine x, then the frequency is the coefficient on that x term, which would be 1. So, well, we'll just be general for a minute. We call that b, right? So the period is 2 pi over the frequency. So in our case, all three of these functions have frequencies of 4. So the period then is 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. And that's consistent with what we see visually when we look at the graph. The period is pi over 2. But unfortunately, all three of these options have it. So that doesn't help us eliminate any of these choices. We have to keep them all in play based on that. So let's start looking a little deeper at each one and see if they could be the graph of what we see in the picture sine 4x. It's got the right frequency. We talked about that. They all do. And the sine is known for starting at 0 and going up. So if you just look at this part of the, this is the sine graph, right? And this is the cosine graph. If you just look at this part of the curve, it looks like it fits perfectly. If we Actually, if we were to continue this over on the left side, it would have the same shape. So as long as it has the right frequency, it would totally work. So we want to keep 1 in. And that actually means that we can eliminate C and D because they do not include choice 1. Now if you're pressed for time or if you see this problem as being difficult and you don't really know how to dig in to um, horizontal shifts, this is a great opportunity to take a guess. It's a long test and if you don't think you're going to be able to do all the problems, you've now eliminated two choices. You're in a good position to take a guess from the remaining three and move on and cut your losses. 
Um, of course, I want you to get every problem right and try every single one. But if you are being strategic and you realize, hey, I'm on the 40th problem, it's late in the game, I don't have a lot of time, let me go see if I find another problem that's easier to do. This is a great opportunity to use one little insight, eliminate a couple choices, take a guess, and move on. If you're hungry and you want to get them all right, we press on. So let's now, let's actually skip to three and look at the sign because we're already talking about sign. What's the difference between sign and negative sign? Well, basically, it flips it upside down. So instead of starting up the way the sign normally does, it starts down and then goes up. So this is negative sign. But notice what they've done now. They've shifted the, um, they've done a horizontal shift of pi, but we can't look at it when what's in this parentheses is all bundled together. We have to actually write it in this standard form where we factor out the coefficient, the b. That frequency has to get factored out. And then when we're left with this term x minus c that's by itself, then and only then can we take that value of c and say that it represents a horizontal shift. So let's do that with choice three. We can rewrite this as negative sign of four which I'm factoring out and we're left with x over pi I'm sorry x plus pi over four now that we've written it that way because if you could distribute the four back right you'd get four x plus pi and we'd be right back where we started but the difference now is we can pick out that pi over four and say that's the horizontal shift that plus pi over four represents a shift of pi over 4 units to the left. So what would happen if we took this graph, this negative sine graph, increased its frequency, that's going to compress its period, right, so it's going to fit this, and then we're going to move it pi over 4 units to the left. That's going to make it look exactly like this graph. So that totally works. 3 is in. And now that gives us the ability to eliminate A and B be in one shot and without ever having to really deeply consider number two we could get the right answer and that's why I wanted to ch I wanted to go after three before going after two because eliminating two or well eliminating two would have got us A right away but keeping it in wouldn't have allowed us to make a distinction between B and E so just kinda looking at the answer choices and game in the system a bit but just for completeness let's also look at number two and confirm that that one makes sense we can use the same method. We'll rewrite this. Let me let me actually come down here. We can rewrite that as y equals cosine of, and we're factoring out a 4, so this becomes x minus pi over 8. So now, again, frequency is correct. It compresses the period. That's all good. Cosine graph normally looks like this, and yet we're shifting it pi over 8 units to the right. So imagine this thing shifted pi over 8 units to the right. That's exactly what we need. If this whole thing was going from 0 to pi over 2, that means a quarter of it would be pi over 8. So if we move it over pi over 8 units to the right and just fill in this other bit, right? This is the missing part that we don't see. Just slide that over to the right. What's that going to look like? It's going to look exactly like the original picture. So 2 is in. Again, you put these three graphs in your graphing calculator one at a time and see that they all look exactly the same and they all look like this picture. That will save you an enormous amount of time. But it, it is helpful to know how to graph all the trig functions, so I really encourage it. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.